Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our legendary Sun Quan Trivia Modded Let's Play. We continue for episode 19 from turn 64 in the summer season of 220. So last episode we got through our rounds of confederation and we pretty much have the southern part of the map fully under control. It's either us or our vassal, so it's the same thing. We're going to create a couple more vassals before we get started, but essentially what we're going to do is digest the officers that we picked up, a lot of our toys, and we can send them off and attack the Kingdom of Wei, who is our first target. So in regards to the Kingdom of Xun, or the Shu lands here, we'll deal with them last. They're rather weak, and the terrain's not the greatest, and if you know there's a Chinese saying that before the world, referring to just China, um, you know, is in chaos, the Shu land goes into chaos first. And once the world, China again, comes out of chaos, Shu is still in chaos. So basically it means they're more likely to rebel first before the big rebellion that craters the country, but they often are the last one to be reincorporated, mainly because they're so isolated. It's not easy to see with this map, even with the way the mountains are constructed, but essentially, you can see that it's a basin, right? That's pretty easy to tell. It's really isolated from the rest. And uh, it's not just like a flat, equal, uh, you know, elevation basin. It's higher. Uh, the entire land, as we go west even farther, it just goes higher and higher and higher. And this is just a basin on top of a you know, elevated place. So it's just difficult to go to uh, with the technologies that people have even up until modern time, actually, you know. Uh, now we have high-speed rails that goes there super easily through the mountains. Uh, but before that, you know, maybe if you had airplanes, you fly. The easiest way is still through the river. Anyhow, uh, we only have four deployments per turn. And we also have this invasion south. This is a faction that we dealt with very early on, we never could get a peace deal with them, right? So that's slightly awkward. What I'm going to surprise them with is by liberating the E province into a vassal situation. I don't really need it. 11 food is great, but it's isolated. It's not going to provide any adjacency bonus, actually, because it's actually not technically adjacent to any place. Uh, the thing with waterways in the game, it's not considered adjacent. So, which general don't we want, is the question. Who do we kind of hate to exile them to this island? But they also gain the chance to, you know, sort of liberate themselves. Ah, let's, res let's give it to the Shur boys. They're pretty high level. We might give it to... Where are they? There's so many here. Okay, there we go. So he's a good boy. <laughs> Faithful of Shu. What happened with Shu Xin is uh, like this. He was the oldest son, or maybe the second oldest. I forgot, but he was sent by Shu Xie to be sort of a political hostage to Wu, because he was vassal. Sending your kid to your vassal liege is a very common practice. And uh, he was great there, you know, but then his brother obviously rebelled down the line and he got killed. Not his fault at all. I think he's the oldest. Uh, we also have the middle child here. So let me let me reward him with the land down there. I also don't think I'm going to keep Lady Shu as well. I'm going to give Deldro back to her, actually. She can keep her own faction. The middle child will keep as sort of a hostage for both of them, plus we need strategists. So perceptive strategists are even better, you know, so this is a good situation. Their age, their age is probably right. Even though they're the kids, Shi Xie, you know, is closer to 90 than you think. So this is, this is correct. All right, so he picks this up. We liberate him. And the moment we do this, 
but he's also related to us through some distant marriage setup. The minute we do this, they are not at war with anyone. Now, she could still declare war on him, but he's safe for now. We don't have a trade route. He does have access to a fishing port, so he does have the capability to trade with us, just he currently can't. I also don't really want to keep Doldr- I don't think we need this place. It's also currently only the food. If I trade it away now, I can just keep these as counties. We're trying to reduce our holdings. You can see each capital we own uh, has quite a hit to our authority, and I prefer to keep authority high. So we're going to try to work through this. We'll first break this siege. Rebels. Someone else used the faction council move against us. And we'll just wipe him out. This army is going to have to stay down south. It's a bit unfortunate, but we have a lot of new toys to play with, so not going to be a problem. Alright, so they're done. We want to launch attack here. We're using this army. We could run into a fight, but we're not scared. Oh, if we can get some elephants, that would be awesome. Capture the general. Um, we said we probably want to give this back to Lady Shu herself. We have stripped everyone of their items. She remarried. Good for her. And these two new factions... We should do a deal with them. I, I do want their item. Every faction has a stone pig in their inventory at the beginning. And we'll basically tell them... We'll never mess with them. And that we're going to be a great lord. We're probably going to do this every spring. We'll give everyone a 15 point sort of bonus every spring. A little red pocket envelope money to make them love us. And you can see this coming down. Uh, capital dropped by 10 points. Settlements. Resource. Did it drop by 20? Our resources actually worth more than capitals. There's no way though, because we own way more resources than capitals. Let me pay attention when we get the next one. All right, we are keeping Yulian because Yulian is really lucrative. How are we gonna do this though? We're gonna do tax for sure. Max the T. And I think we can actually downgrade after we max everything because it's just commerce and industry that we need. And we already have the core four buildings once they hit rank five. This one's... Do we have this rank five available? No, we don't have the reform yet. Are we close? No, we're three away. We went this way. We, we need to go... We're going this way anyways, but we're not close. So we hit the 400. We're going to start downgrading. I'm not going to keep it this high up. Um, we're actually already building this, so that means I can start downgrading now without any problems. It looks like we're good, so we don't need to do any of those assignments right now. I uh, can probably do some income ones. We have more than enough characters, but we're probably going to do that at the end of turn. Night battle. Let's see, so we're worried about this rebellion down the line, which is why he's here. We have one army going into this, which I think is enough. I'm going to have to arm them and also mobilize them here. We have weird items. Take this. Take, we have plenty of good horses. Sea down lance with the sea down warrior set. And yeah, take this. Destroyers of Treachery against Nanman faction troops. 
Splash damage. Yeah, I think this would work. Not what I thought about first, but I, I guess it would work. So we could do it. And we'll give you the full Celestial Fury tactician design combination, which gives us a lot of firing rate. And let's see if we have any... No, we don't have any horses that can help you. Um, he's not going to be commanding. He's not going to be leading either. But we'll give him, give him a good four points. See you down set. Okay, so we have a very see you down themed team here. Interesting. It's not any stats that we're looking for. Take a bit of instinct there. Our strategy is kind of bad, so I guess we get the wedge through this. But he's not going to have cap. Well, he's not going to have cavalry under his command. That's right. So that's kind of pointless. Melee evasion. We're going to do the swap. Oh, it's not high enough level. Embarrassing. Let's walk to the edge, and then we start swapping. The Destroyer of Treachery. Splash damage, Shot Cav. Looters unique unit. They're pretty good. Okay, we want to bring as much fire weapon as possible. Unfortunately, we don't have access to flaming shots on the Tribuchet, which is probably why we should bring the Juggernauts. And that means you're going to have to get some Spear Guards. He's not rank 6, so there's no Tiger Guards for him. And that's okay. Alright, so they're good. We're here to attack them. Eventually loop down here, take care of this. I don't know who owns that, but I'm guessing another Nanman Rebel faction. We are moving Jian Yong out. We're going to send him back to the bench. It's going to take us quite a few turns to get all the ones we want onto the field. It's going to be a bit of adjustment period. They're still going to just hover. They went into the water. Um, do we ch I think we can actually reach this. He's going to run? No, he's not going to run. That's an interesting choice by him. I thought he would have just ran. He's rather beat. I think the garrison is probably enough. We're trying to recall this army too. Because I kind of want to get the three brothers into different armies. Reunite a couple of the kids with the dads. Liu Bei would make a pretty good... Oh, actually no. It's all militia base. We're not really into militias. So we can actually recruit E Marksman if we want. Uh, white feather was something that was worn um, on the headdress of veterans from the Sioux province. Um, they're kind of, because they're veterans, they're considered elite troops for Liu Bei. They're called Bayer, the white ear, uh, because of the feather. It's a good bonus. Uh, seems to be more spear and melee infantry, melee cavalry focused. There's no set bonus, so he doesn't necessarily need to. Oh, Di Lu. It's gotta be with his armor, right? Okay. So even if it says not active, I think it's probably active. So the rest is fine. That's his stuff. John Fei has a J Chaser. One you has the red hair. And his set is Steed of Loyalty. Okay. Ooh, garlic. 5% replenishment. Very good. 
Yeah, I, I figure we just recall them and spread them to different armies. Elemental Vigor, that skill tree, if we can reroll it next spring would be great. I don't know if we can though. I'm gonna jump here and try to grab these. Just free that up. Actually, are you using... Everyone's using Xiliang, huh? There's a Wuhuan one right here. Yeah, because I'm saying that because I don't have any more Xiliang horses. This way at least they can get a bonus. Alright, they'll just stay on them. We want to start recruiting. If we can. Perfect. We can recruit on this side. I don't think we need E-Marksmen here. Especially now that I have seen that we can recruit them in time with the item that Ilbei dropped us. So... Get one tiger. And we'll swap these two to these. Oh, it looks so ugly. Two tiger. He's not gonna be ever. Yeah, this is the closest. Uh, sure, this is fine. It doesn't look great, I know. But what are we gonna do? And to swap this one, actually. Guess that unit was on full health. It's alright. Chen Peacekeepers. They're not. They're not like the strongest melee cav, but. With the dual ability, having a decent crossbow, good stat lines. Huang Zhong. Who, who makes more sense with this group? That's the question. We have so many choices, but I'm just saying, like, they have better options too, like, better pairings than this. Zhuge Liang does have quite a bit of range bonus. Like, Zhuge Liang plus Huang Zhong in a range focused army would be pretty sick. So we're gonna do. Fire. Oh, actually, he doesn't have it. Ah. Huh. Interesting. We can't get any set with that one, so maybe we don't use that one. We don't really need to be fighting. Alright, I'm gonna leave this army. We're not gonna swap to that one. We're gonna do Zhuge Liang's calling card. The repeating crossbowmen. Switch things up a little. Juggernauts. And trebuchets. Alright, a lot of crossbow damage. A lot of crossbow damage. On these as well. I think this actually works. Okay, so that army is good. We're really just... Trying to occupy the cities, have a few in attack position, but also have a few more ready in these cities to be defensive against what they have. So I think I move them here. We have to keep pushing this way. Now we probably have the option to swap to someone that we actually get along with. Might be hard. Wei and you have a problem with strategists. Oh dear. We got so many, and uh, none of them is willing to work with Wei and here. Okay, uh, you can stay, you can stay, it's not your problem. Uh, 
All right, so we have the attack on Sapi ready. We have the attack on Pingyuan ready. Uh, I actually think I want to take Yobei Ping first. And then we... I think this is the place where we want to summon... I mean, if we're preparing for a war with Cao Cao. But I feel like we have a pretty dense setup here. There's a little thin on this front, but... We're fighting Zhang Lu and Ma Chou and Xiao Hou Yuan. We're not fighting Cao Cao, so it's a little bit different. I feel like this northern one has the most hope of dealing the most damage. Xun Yu, after sending the empty lunch pail, will get ready to attack Cao Cao from the north. Just gotta find him some... Let's see, who would be an interesting pairing? Unleash the elephants in the north. And then we need ourselves a vanguard that is actually interesting. We might not have one until Zhang Fei down the line. We could wait till next turn for Zhang Fei to be summoned here. I don't know if he will get along with them. Tao Xiu? Oh, Zhang Fei would get along. But we'll save him for maybe Lady Xia Hou's army. We'll return Tao Xiu to Cao Cao. Who can lead this? She actually might not need a weapon. There's enough damage on the elephant to save a weapon spot for other people. What? Any particular unit I want with her? I think just Protector of Heaven's just fine. Yeah, he can't actually recruit Cataphract, so that's good we kept that. Gonna need to ask for some items. That one's on cooldown, gotta wait till next turn. Do I have the Lord of Fire set? I don't think so. Alright, you can pick up a gold weapon. Wedge. Even though I think the strategist is high enough level here. Is there a bow? Nice. You can get a set bonus there. I'm not commanding. Yeah, I don't think we're using Juggernauts up here. Does he have... He does not have Fire Arrow. He does not have Fire Arrow. I mean, it doesn't stop us from using this. It's just that we could consider using something else. Imperial Palace Crossbowman. Which got their range back. 250. Um... Well, let's do that, actually. We'll just use trebuchets as our fire component. We can't borrow the item this turn. Also, I guess we didn't need these, but then he's... Let's swap two of these out. Or we swap this one and then go with the other... Wait, why can't I swap this one? There we go. And then these will be mercenary ones next turn, once we get the item on him. Alright, so we'll be able to attack this, this, this at the same time. And then we probably need more armies up here, even. But that's good for now. We don't have any more deployment, as you can see. Without Liu Bei, I don't think the spy investment is going to be working out here. 
There's like no one we want to flip. Maybe we want some info on Zhang Lu. So he has two armies still on the field from what it looks like. Off his bench, only Zhang Lu is interesting, which we're never going to get. Plus eight. Okay, not a big deal. They're too happy with him. At least right now. To really make a difference. I think we wait. I mean, three of them are here. He's here. That means there's an army of two maybe here or maybe here, right? That's And then we're also going to bump into Mach Hall's units. I kind of wanted to trade this to him, but I think I might hold on to it for another turn to summon another army potentially. In terms of vassals, have we made enough? It's a good question. I mean, Jianning. We'll know once we look at this. Danyang, great place, keeping it. We don't necessarily need money. These are timing out in a few turns. We have four of them. This one's already timed out. So 97, we need to maintain at least three, it seems. We're not lacking money. We're not lacking satisfaction. None of this is actually really needed. We could do it if we want to. Marginal increase. But we really don't need to. So I'm not going to sweat the assignments. Nanhai. Not necessarily the most lucrative, but we did build tall because they did have a harbor and a, a, a commerce. So there's a lot of commerce here, basically. 840 base. Very impressive. Huayang is just a big industry town, which is why we made it tall. Don't. Has a little bit of everything. Private workshop. Lin Hai. Yeah, it's fine. It's a salt mine. Right. Nanning is probably the best. Three income counties. The only one in the game. So there's definitely reasons to give it an administrator for good, where we don't take it out. Someone with additional bonus one. Yeah, Sunyu actually does have burn trait plus the necessary bonuses. He would actually make a very good administrator here. I actually don't know if anyone can compete with him, with his existing skill tree. Yeah, let's just pick him. I think he's great. Okay. We're downgrading because we don't want to leave this too tall. Technically, this place could also use Administrator. There's a lot of places where we probably don't need Administrator anymore, like Wulan, for example. I, I still like Liu Xun. So what we're going to do is we're going to dismiss him and see if I can simultaneously shuffle him to we go back? I think he goes on cooldown because he's not on the field. But the minus 20 points not going to kill him. Who needs... Who needs administrators? We had one in mind. Not these. Yulin. Right, Yulin. I have to click it through this. If I click it through the outside, we actually... He would automatically go on cooldown. But I think he goes on cooldown here, even with this. Unless he's on the field. I think if he's on the field, then this technique actually works.
No, it works. It works. Awesome. This way you can actually flip them without letting it go on cooldown. Good thing. All right. So we shuffled one. Changsha is a good commerce town. I want the tax. I want the food. Technically want administrator here as well. So like, um, where's Luan's administrator? We can do the same thing with this. Yoshin actually might have been on the field. Now I thought of it, you know. Let's see if we can find him. Guo, Guo Ziyou, I think is his name. Perfect. All right, administrators linked hold. What we're going to do is give him an item. If we can find him. It's not that hard spotting green in our faction. It's our rarest color. So instead of getting more money, I'll be happier if you actually got us more food. Yeah, I, I he still doesn't need this item. He honestly doesn't need any of these items, so take that off. There might be a title for him that would help us. Population growth. That might have been the the one for there's no food. There's a peasantry one, but there's no food one. All right, that's not going to help. Who needs to level up? Administrator of Zhangke, pick up the commerce. I can give you this. I can give you, that's not good. I can give you this, give you this. Don't want the peasantry. Guess I'll just take the stats. Or maybe construction cost discount. There's actually quite a bit to build. And the snake. Zanke is commerce. So if we can pick that up. Perfect. Who we have the industry one? Alrighty. So that might be everything. Oh, um, not done with the buildings also. Not sure about creating vassals. I'm not sure we're done creating vassals. Like Xiaoyang, for example. It's very crowded. Not exactly what I'm looking for, but I, I guess I guess we keep it. It's a good place for us to dump armies. Badong is actually pretty lucrative. It's a weird combination of peasantry and industry, which is good for champion administrators. And we do have access to those, so... It's gonna be all sorts of income once we build that. We are building that mainly for... I mean, there's gonna be a lot of commerce. It should go tall, to be honest. Longya, decent food place. I'm going to put a commerce building in there. Same thing here. Yep, 
If we get Coral, I'll give him Beihite. Ah, uh, we got sieged by the looters. Alright, Tom was at a decent status. It could be producing more food for us, but we don't own that, so... As long as it's positive food, I guess we don't really care. Seventy. Well, minus seventy. It's okay. That's basically one fight. We got an average one fight. It'd be funny if he declares war and attack us this turn. Ah, there is Coral. You want Beihai back? Join me again. Well, I'll pass would fall instantly. We can challenge Hone. Sapi would fall instantly. Pingyuan, Ohai, Youbei Ping would all fall instantly. Yeah, I think we're fine. Let's check this real quick and continue. 27? That's higher than I thought. We can vassalize him. It's actually exactly what we would have done once we taken Hanzhong. The only difference is I wouldn't get Jiamen Path. And that's something I actually kind of want. And we can't trade it with him either. That's the bummer. But we can stop worrying about this army down here. We can take this path to attack Zhaohuyuan next. He can buffer us for Ma Chao. We can see Ma Chao's army come through. A lot of pros. Lots of pros here. Alright, we're doing it. Yeah, basically we were going to make a vassal there. So the land had no... Huh? Why, why is Jian Yong... Is this... I'm so confused. Where, where did this hot empire come from? They inherited all the items? Wait, we we annexed one. This this is so weird. There's a new high empire. I mean, okay, I'll take the gold weapon, I'll pay you for it. He kept, the, the faction even kept the attitude that we had from before, before we did the ultimatum. Thank God he didn't keep all the per turn payments. He's a clone of us with 11 trade partners. The game file is super confused. This is kind of a cool armor. Or cool uh, accessory item. I can buy two silver at once. Alright, 
It's actually a terrible silver item, but money is kind of meaningless at this point. We'll get his silver stuff. We buy three bronze in one go. Yes, we can. Actually, five thousand. He still has a bronze item, I think. We'll take this as well. I, I have no idea where they came from. They're letting me confederate them again. This this is our general, by the way. Where did we absorb him? Oh, he's not our general. He he is in that faction, but not in our faction. But this is my land. Nothing makes sense anymore. Should I just confederate them to make sure it's not a weird thing? I'll pick him up. Maybe he will get along with Wei Yan. Who knows? I mean, it's a free confederate. There's no downside to this. I can even do... There's actually upside to this, because we gave him a lot of cash, right? We can get all that cash back if we want, <laughs> which it's okay. We don't actually want that, but I could get all this back. It's 194k, um, but we have to do it in like increments of 15 points where we do the per turn payment. We can get a four. <sighs> Who cares about 194k? Just, just come back to us. Is there going to be a new Han faction every few turns? I mean, if it means all the items get reshuffled back into the bench and that we can grab them, it's not a bad thing. Alrighty, so we had our second crash of the entire series, actually, so it's not that bad with so many mods. It crashed after us trying to remove them. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. I basically had to redo the whole turn. We didn't do any battle, so I try to keep it as same as possible. But when we reloaded this this new, you know, army that was set up here, also the new high empire. So it's weird. I don't know. Uh, we bought all the items again. We redeployed the armies that we had in the north again. We recalled Obe and the group again. Vassalized Zhang Lu again. So th those are all the same. Um, just had to basically do it all over again. I didn't get John Wu's spy because I knew it was going to lead to anything. So boot like Daniel somehow didn't equip him with any of the gold item that the faction got. But I think it's like literally the first turn they spawn. So now I have a duplicate Daniel. It's a I think this is TUP Daniel and there's an MTU Daniel, which we, we have both. They're the same person. Uh, it's just we have two copies of them now with different artwork because they have different artwork in different mods. See? He has a MTU unique one. That one's like the base game generic upgraded with a different art. If that makes any sense. I don't think you need this, even though that is your sword for MTU. But there's no set bonus, so who knows if it's yours? Alright, so I think I have everything set up properly to end the turn. Not entirely sure we might have missed on I think we're good yeah they're just really really weak I think everyone's deployed we used up all our deploy limits again Zhuge Liang basically into Huang Zhong's army and then the three in the north we did that all over again everyone's moved up to their proper positioning yeah let's 
and oh oh buildings we didn't do buildings We did not do buildings. This is don't. Not don't. I will do that. Probably didn't need to be this tall. But it's fine. It's actually pretty easy to get under attacked in that position. So having it, you know, leveled up, it's not a bad thing. The garrison improves all that good stuff. want this to go up one more level or multiple levels actually I don't know if all the administrator ah uh, the administrator shuffle didn't happen okay let me fix that real quick I remember what, what which one it was well you miss them here and we just gotta find Rubin. we own a lot of land there we go we found it and we just have to find Goyoju or I think that's his name did I pass him? He would have a lot of icons. I haven't hit him yet. There we go. And we also need to swap out... Like Jianning needs... I think Roshu, I think we took out Runan's administrator. If memory serves... We just look by money. It's an easy way to find administrators. They reduce corruption, which is why they would be more lucrative. Now we have to switch it through here. We're looking for Jian Ning. Then Liu Xun, where are you? Perfect. Um, Lin Hai should swap over to Changsha. Or it's not necessary. Yeah, it's not really necessary. Wei Ping, could we give her. I know we gave the food production earlier before the crash to Kuai Ji, but I actually think she has more food here. Well, where is she? There we go. I think, yep. We have a brown horse. Good enough. I think that's good. Let's... Oh, I don't think we finished the buildings. We did a few of them and went on to do administrator stuff. Yeah, there's definitely more to be done. Xiangyang. I guess we'll keep it. Badong could technically use administrator as well, but I think we'll just keep it nice and tidy. Not so... High level. I actually wonder, I mean, we vassalized them. I had this army march up. I wonder if, I, I know we don't technically border it. Yeah, so I can't trade for it. Oh well. So I think now is the time to pass this over to them. I don't need to keep this, they can have it. Uh, it's already over 15, so just a nice, kind gift. Now, Zhang Lu, despite being our vassal, and oh, he's trusting, that's pretty good. Um, He's not going to like us, because we just beat him up in a war. Maybe he needs a bit of a care package. You know, just straight up money. 
Okay, just so that he love us right away. We'll just refresh his trend a little bit. Let's get above 60. They say it's 15, 60, 150 for the three different tiers. And let's let's put him above 60. Uh, this is weird. It happens. Just gotta click on something else that works until we pull it back. There we go. Both of them can buffer for Ma Chao. We're gonna take Xiao Houyun first. And then summon a bit more of our army on this side to attack Cao Cao from this. I mean, we're gonna basically have Cao Cao being attacked from everywhere once this war starts. Well, let's go. Xiaohuan had like two armies over here earlier. I don't know. They can't get back because of shallow. They have to walk. I don't know if they have more defending or they just don't have anyone, which is also a possibility. Got ourselves uh, armor. Ooh. Armies in the administrator commander, we get 25%. Of Ooh, wow. That's actually pretty sick. All right, Tal is trying to go back home the same way. We're letting Wei Yan walk the path that he wanted to take. Although the game only provides one path. Technically, the path he wanted to take would be like... Maybe here. Well, the game, I mean, this is like uh, Zhu Wu path. This is the most common one that Zhuge Liang took. There should have been three more passes in here. But the map is shrunk a little, so it makes sense. All right, I like our border placements. They can keep the mustering. It looks like we're in striking distance anyways. All right, so we have the three targets under threat. We're definitely going to be deploying new armies because we have so many characters. He never grew his army. Travel time. He's going to stay put. I wonder if the correct play here, instead of sitting in the city, is to ambush outside the city. So when the looters spawn, we just ambush and kill them, instead of letting them siege the city every time. We have a long journey back. Let's try to speed that up. We'll hit the ports. I wonder if it's... No, it's still faster to go through this side, I think. Maybe we just get into the water. We would join the attack on Nanyang. I mean, it would get destroyed instantly with what we have. What these two army will most likely do... Oh, okay, so we got resistance, but we'll most likely take this route to the Wu, Wu Guan or Wu Path and take them there. Right, we're, we're basically going west with this group. He's gonna follow behind. I feel like, if anything, this is where we dump more armies. Nobei is basically sending them... I mean, Nobei and Zhang Fei are from this area. They're getting close to home. Let's see if Zhang Fei gets along with Lady Xiao Hou. It's a kidnap wife. I don't blame her. At least there's no red X. And do we have a champion? I'm sure we do. Ah, Zhang Yi. That works. Not related. Not related, but also part of Shu. We can recruit our own. I'm assuming she... Oh, she doesn't have fire arrow. Hmm. Do we want to go... 
with any weird combinations. Not the set. We'll go with this. We could go anything. We could go crossbow if we want here. We don't have the fire arrows. It just might hamper our replenishment time. But what we can do is give him the garlic. That'd be a nice 5% boost. Take the extra stats. See if we have a Wuhan spear. Yes, we do. We don't have that. Fatigue immunity. Charge negation for own retinue. That's actually pretty good. We don't have the celestial blade, but just that for green armies. Basically, we end. He's a champion, so he never picks that up from his skill tree. That's actually pretty good. Basically, charge negation plus charge reflect. Take no damage and reflect the charge right back on the enemy. Probably what we want. Alright, the north is going to be a terrifying group. Uh, we have one more deployment. We want to use it. We don't want to waste it. Where, though? I still want to recruit it there. We could also launch a naval attack from here to hit some of the, like, we can jump down here and then fight this as they go up and then just basically they can just, we can like maybe go, yo, Beiping, Beiping, Delsi, and then just hit back. And then the army that lands here continue this way. Because it'll just be a small cleanup operation. So no one too impressive. We don't want to waste anyone too useful. We could maybe use a Normad. And then we'll see who he, you know, be getting along well with. Not administrator. I'm assuming you might get a good uh, strategist, but who knows? We have time. This group is not rushed, so it recruits your own stuff. Okay, things are going pretty well. Fooling. What is this? We we didn't do this. It's now bugged out. It's the mods. See now I can upgrade it. Isn't that weird? It's okay, we wanna Private workshop here, uh, state workshop here anyways. Is our, it's, it's good, it's good, it's good. All these numbers, look at this. All these numbers are shooting way up. Exactly what we want to see. Actually, you want to get this up first. Oh, this is two builds, great.
actually debatable if we... I guess we're going for it because we're already a large city. It's going to be lucrative, so I guess it does make sense. So why are we not T? All right, so those are all good. Get our spies. Nope. All right, let's continue. Any time now? There we go. All right, we got our save. Oh, thief. Potential poison volley down the line. Anyhow, uh, things are going well. We're going to be finishing off some of the southern rebellions. We're going to be launching yet another army north. I think we'll take this final turn to get another army in the north. We'll get four. And then we'll also pile one here. And then we'll get a fifth next turn. But next turn is when we actually declare right away. Let's get Wei Yan to live his dream. He's uh, Are they blocking us? They're... We can't move out. Great, right? Anyhow, I guess he can't get his dream. We'll be... I think Xiao Huyan just has these two pieces of land, by the way, because this is his capital, and it's just a minor resource county. That's Ma Chol. That's Ma Chol. So that's all he has. Ma Chol actually has quite a bit of land randomly all over the place. I think Ma Chol is fighting Tol Tol, by the way. Oh, he's, he's not. But, oh, Tol Tol took his land, right, as a subject. He had Zhang Yan's land. He doesn't have it anymore, so... It's also just like snapped it. I see that's what happened. Um, anyways, we are looking prepared as you see all these army lines, these little triangles getting ready to attack Tal Tal. We'll pounce, we'll probably make quick work of him and then pacify the West and China will be ours. We even have the North kind of covered. We'll have armies up here. Once we take these land, we'll dump armies here in the future to not only contain Ma Chol, but also just take Tal Tal's land from the West as well. So. All will be well, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye!